cancer cells avidly use glucose to fuel their own metabolism. By and large, plant-based foods, even ones that have some natural sugars in them, actually help reduce the risk of cancer. Dr. Lee has spent years researching the impact of diet on our health, and his findings on sugar and cancer are both alarming and enlightening. Let's explore how sugar contributes to cancer development and what we can do to protect ourselves. That our body uh, needs sugar. In fact, the organ in our body that needs the most sugar is our brain. It is, it is uh, you know, sugar is something that fuels our metabolism. And the key is that in most people who are able to, their, your body is able to process a small amount of sugar without a problem, without any problem whatsoever. And so the sugars that you might have encounter in your whole foods, so fruits and vegetables, those are completely fine. Your body should be able to take care of that. Let's understand the basics. Cancer occurs when the DNA and genes in your cells get damaged, causing them to mutate and grow uncontrollably. Unlike healthy cells, cancer cells become immortal and spread rapidly throughout the body, using up your nutrients and burning through your sugar reserves. We're actually talking about, uh, at the microscopic level, that um, cancer has a micro environment. It lives in a micro environment. So just like if you had fish in a fish tank, um, uh, how what's going on around the fish in, in your tank actually makes a big difference in terms of how well the fish actually uh, thrives. And so cancer, think about cancer being like in an aquarium and that aquarium being kind of miniaturized in our body. There's a micro environment. Um, there's a little mini terrarium or aquarium around every tumor, every cancer cell. And so uh, among the most sophisticated cancer researchers, and I, I count myself in, in that group, we now refer to cancer as very much due to uh, related to cancer cells and the microenvironment. And where sugar comes in, along with other micronutrients in the microenvironment that feed both normal and healthy cells, um, uh, is the fact that glucose is uptaken by every single cell in the body. But because cancer cells are revved up, they are able to actually take that nutrient and actually fuel themselves. So what started as sort of like a well-intentioned interpretation by a non-medical profession has now been really validated, I think, by the cancer research world. Now, you know, because sugar itself sort of quickly goes to stuff you would add to your drinks or your, your, your desserts, you know, it all of a sudden becomes kind of um, a flip topic. But in reality, I think that it's incontrovertible that if, uh, to cancer researchers that, that cancer cells avidly use glucose to fuel their own metabolism. So here's where things get more sophisticated. In a typical person, let's say you or I, as who doesn't have diabetes, our bodies are able to take any glucose that we introduce by our diet and, and take it down to a sub-threshold that wouldn't drive that cancer cell any faster than it would a normal cell. So in other words, our endocrine system, our, our body's own ability to process glucose, pretty much takes anything that we introduce in our stomach. And although there might be a quick spike, we'll take it back down within a few minutes. If you've got diabetes, it's a different situation because your hyperglycemic microenvironment that your whole body represents is probably contributing to the growth of that cancer to begin with. And so if you wanted to be safer, uh, if you had cancer, if you struggled with cancer, uh, and, and even if your sugar, uh, your body's ability to process sugar is fine, you might want to kind of stay away from added sugars if you can. But then this is where it gets even trickier. People say, well, then I'm not going to have fruits because fruits are sweet. And then fructose is turned into glucose in the body. You know, again, this is the slippery slope where people who are not biochemists, who are not research scientists, get into that realm where they can talk about the topic and, and make themselves more confused. I will tell you that although there, there is um, natural fruit sugars in a piece of fruit, the reality is, is when you eat a piece of fruit, an apple, a pear, a peach, something sweet, um, a grape, you are getting a lot more than the fructose in your body. You are getting fiber. You are getting polyphenols. You're getting uh, all these other micronutrients, many of which can actually fight the cancer itself. And so food as medicine isn't a pill where you've got good guys and bad guys and cyanide pills and, you know, and, and, and cure-alls and, and magic bullets. It's really food is really a complex mix. And what, what we're really finding when you look at the evidence, again, evidence being really important, is that 
by and large, plant-based foods, even ones that have some natural sugars in them, actually help reduce the risk of cancer. Dr. Lee explains that insulin resistance creates an environment where cancer cells can thrive. They latch onto the excess sugar and insulin in your bloodstream, fueling their rapid growth and spread. So how does sugar actually fuel cancer? When you eat sugar, it enters your bloodstream, causing your blood sugar levels to rise. Insulin, a hormone from the pancreas, helps keep these levels in check. However, eating too much sugar can lead to insulin resistance, where your cells stop responding properly to insulin. It's, it's the, the, the sugars, sugars that are, that are dangerous, dangerous for diseases, diseases and, and the sugars, sugars that damage, damage your microbiome, that, that uh, uh, spark, spark inflammation. inflammation. That can, that can even, even damage your DNA. DNA. That's, that's the concept, the concept of, of added, added sugar. sugar. So, so it's a can, can of soda that's got, it's got 10, 10 tablespoons of added, added sugar, sugar to it to make it, to make it really sweet. sweet. Nobody, no human body can, can, can tolerate that over any period of time. And so what I try to say is that like, it's so easy, so tempting when it comes to something like sugar to, to go for that all or nothing approach. No, our body needs a little sugar. Your body can actually handle most sugar when it comes to a fruit or a vegetable. It's just fine. Added sugar, candies, cakes, sodas, okay? Um, uh, you know, that those are the ones that easily overwhelm you. So if you're sensitive to sugar, uh, just like you've got diabetes, you got to sort of cut down or cut out those things and be super mindful uh, uh, of, of making those type of choices. It's clear that reducing sugar intake can be a powerful step in cancer prevention. So, what can we do to protect ourselves? Here are some practical steps to reduce your sugar intake and lower your cancer risk. Limit sugary drinks. Cut back on sodas, fruit juices, and energy drinks. These beverages are loaded with sugar. Two taste whole foods. Opt for whole, unprocessed foods. Fresh fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains are excellent choices. Three red labels. Check food labels for hidden sugars. Ingredients like high fructose corn syrup, dextrose, and sucrose are all forms of sugar. Four, healthy alternatives. Use natural sweeteners like honey or stevia in moderation. They're less processed and have a lower glycemic index. That's it, everyone. The link between sugar and cancer is clear, and cutting back on sugar can significantly boost your health. Dot Research gives us valuable insights into how our diet affects cancer risk. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and let us know in the comments how you plan to reduce your sugar intake. Thanks for watching, and remember to stay informed and stay healthy.